Hi guys, welcome to another episode here at Noriega Recos and it's been a while since we created our last video but I'm very excited to share with you the things that I've recently learned in the NFT world. Last year was a very big year for NFTs. Total NFTs sold amounted to about $25 billion. That's a lot of money. This year, OpenSea, the largest NFT marketplace, has already sold $3.5 billion worth of NFTs just in the first two weeks of January. That means we can easily double the amount of NFT sold last year as more projects launch in the coming months. In this video, I'll talk about what NFTs are and hopefully I'll be able to explain it to you a little better so that you can be inspired to learn more about NFTs. So let's get to it. Here at Toriaga Records, we talk about tech, food, finance, and investing. If you're interested in any of those topics, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get updated every time we release new videos. So, what are NFTs? NFTs are non-fungible token. Still sounds foreign, right? So let's go through it word for word. So let's start off with the word fungible. What does fungible mean? According to Wikipedia, in economics, fungibility is the property of a good or a commodity whose individual units are essentially interchangeable and each of whose parts is indistinguishable from another part. That's still a mouthful. Let's go through some examples. An example of a fungible asset is money. So for example, I borrow 100 pesos from you and after a week, I pay you with 520 peso bills or is it 520 peso coins now? Or 10 10 peso coins. When I give that money to you, I'm to 200 pesos, my debt is paid. So basically, money is interchangeable, meaning the 100 pesos can be exchanged for 50 pesos, for 20 peso bills, or even 10 peso bills, or even uh, 1 peso coins if you, if, you, if you need coins. In general, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Luna are fungible like money. So it doesn't matter if my Bitcoin was mined at the start of the blockchain, or at the end of the blockchain, as long as both of them are the same amount, then they have the same value. So let's go through another example. In commodities, for example, rice. Rice is really big here in a country, and rice grown in different parts of the country, and as long as they're the same type, so let's say sinandoming, will generally cost the same amount when sold in the market. The sinandoming rice is actually indistinguishable. So you wouldn't be able to distinguish a difference between one from the other. Another example would be stocks. So for example, I own stocks in Jollibee and I own 10 shares, for example, and you own 10 shares as well. So both our 10 shares represent the same amount of ownership in the company. So it shows owning stocks in a company is indistinguishable because it doesn't matter if I own the first 10 stocks and you own the second 10 stocks, they st still represent the same amount of ownership. Last example, which is close to my heart, would be, for example, you're buying shampoo in the supermarket, and you've seen the variant that you use, let's say Palmolive Pink, and you're looking at the big bottle. So it doesn't matter if you take the first bottle, or the third bottle, or the bottle at the very back, each shampoo bottle would still be the same as long as it's the same variant. So it's interchangeable and indistinguishable. On the other hand, non-fungible assets mean the opposite. That means they are not interchangeable and they are distinguishable. Let's talk about some examples. Instead of borrowing money, let's say I borrow your car, which is a Toyota Alta. After one week, I go back to you and return another car. A Toyota Vios. Of course, you wouldn't accept the Toyota Vios as a replacement for your Toyota Altis because your car is not interchangeable with another car. You're able to identify it using the plate number, or the engine number. Another example would be a piece of art. So for example, the Mona Lisa. If somebody offers you a Mona Lisa, then most likely that's a fake because the original one is in a museum in Paris. Hopefully, I was able to clarify what fungible and non-fungible means. So, non-fungible means it's not interchangeable and it's distinguishable. So, next up would be token. 
So when we talk about token, I'm brought back to my childhood when I would go to the arcade and take my money and exchange it for tokens. Yes, I know for the young ones here, you wouldn't probably know what tokens are because you're more familiar with a time zone card. So tokens and time zone card would basically work the same way. It gives you access to the games within the arcade. The token of the arcade is a tangible representation of the money that I exchange for those tokens. So according to Wikipedia, a token is defined as a thing serving as a visible or tangible representation of a fact, quality, feeling, etc. So what are the things that I'm able to do with a token? First, as I mentioned, you're able to gain access to the games within the arcade. Even if I had a million pesos and I wanted to play games within the arcade, if I don't exchange it for a token, then I won't be able to play any of the games. Next, I'm able to participate in all the activities happening within the arcade. So some games actually reward you for playing the game, like the playing basketball or bowling, and you're able to gain tickets. So those tickets can then be used to redeem prizes within the arcade. So a token gives you access and allows you to participate in the arcade. So let's bring it all together now. What does a non-fungible token mean? So for me, in my own words, a non-fungible token is a unique representation of ownership of a digital asset that is found on the blockchain. NFTs are really a code on the blockchain. And the things that we see, like the JPEGs that are shared or the artwork that's shared, are the representation of the code on the blockchain. So what are the different types of NFTs? Firstly, there's art. An example would be Beeple's Every Days, The First 5,000 Days, which sold for $69 million. Yes, $69 million. It's, that was the biggest sale in the NFT space during that time. Another popular NFT art would be the Bored Ape Yacht Club, which is considered as a blue chip NFT right now. Another type of NFT would be games. An example of an NFT game that became so popular in the Philippines last year was Axie Infinity. So you buy three Axies to form a team so that you can compete and play Axie Infinity. Another example would be NBA Top Shot. I'm a big basketball fan. Allows me to collect moments of my favorite NBA players. There are other examples of NFTs like film, music, and believe it or not, real estate. Yes, you can buy land in the metaverse. NFTs have become so big that big companies have started getting into NFTs as well, like Nike and Adidas. Nike actually bought a virtual shoe company selling shoes in the metaverse. Adidas, on the other hand, partnered with popular NFTs like Board 8 Yacht Club to create their own NFT line called Into the Metaverse. So remember, NFTs are not just pictures that you can right-click and save to your computer because it represents ownership of a digital asset that gives you access to different things. So for example, I mentioned Axie Infinity earlier. The Axies allow you to play the game so you can get the chance to win cryptocurrency, which you can exchange for real money. And the Top Shot offers collectors experiences like being able to watch NBA games for free. So for some of the other NFTs that I hold, some perks that I'm able to get would be first is you get access to a community that have the same interests as you. So you can grow and create friends through that community. Next would be access to events. So that could either be parties or cooking lessons or even free mental health consultations, which is something that we should be all aware of during this time. Another NFT offers free merchandise like clothes and the ability to purchase clothes in the future. Some NFTs actually provide free additional NFTs on top of what you bought via airdrops. So you're able to increase your collection without doing anything. I hope after watching this video, you're able to understand a little more what NFTs are and it starts you off in your own journey to learn about NFTs, get to know the different types of NFTs and be on your journey to be a participant in NFTs and in the metaverse. I know this video probably made what NFTs are a little bit clearer, but it probably gave you more questions to ask as well, like what NFTs to buy, how to buy, where to buy, and so on and so forth. 
So leave those questions in the comment section below and then I plan to do more videos about NFTs in the coming days. So hopefully I'll be able to help you in your journey to learn more about NFTs. So don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel so you get updated every time we create a new video. And please don't forget to share this video with your friends and your families who would want to learn more about NFTs. Thank you and see you in our next videos.